Weirdest thing you find is that when you hear about Flat Earth at first, it sounds absurd and absolutely insane. But once you see the amount of people that believe it is so, and the claims that they say, well, I'm instantly brought back to the Word of God, which says about concerning a matter, to answer before listening, well that is a folly and a shame. Proverbs 18.13 so that's what I do, is put forth my best effort to listen, and when I did so, concerning the topic of Flat Earth, one of the absolute craziest things that I've come to find is that there are no real pictures of the Earth. Not one are real. And there is proof of that, so if you really want to continue to believe the Earth is a ball, well, you have to find another way if you want to, or believe the lie. It's 2017 now, and there's no real photos of the Earth as a ball? Are you kidding me? For me, this is a big wake-up call. The first way to know for sure is to check the source. We look and ask NASA, and they even openly admit that their photos are done in Photoshop. They are composite images. The only quote unquote real photograph that NASA took of the Earth from space, the only one, was done apparently from the Apollo 17 mission in 1972. Now, my friend Jake Gibson, the flat earth asshole, did an awesome job on debunking this real photograph, and it was simple. All you have to do is match up the time and date for that photograph with timeanddate.com and it's plain to see that it does not match up with what we should see in the quote unquote photo. It's been debunked. NASA's a lie. Anytime you see a picture of the Earth as a ball in its entirety from space, you should ask yourself if it looks real. Most of the time, the answer is gonna be no, it does not. Just Google picture of the Earth from space and you'll notice that most of them are CGI and it's apparent to me that none truly exist. All you have to do is open your mind and your eyes to see. Use logic and reason and compare that photograph that you see with the date and time map on timeanddate.com. I bet they do not match up or even come close to what we should see. What is going on? You're looking at the globe. When you look at a perfect sphere, you're seeing half of the sphere. Okay? You're seeing half of the sphere. Hold on, I'm doing some mentalism here. You're going to see half of the ball. So that means half of the ball is being shown right here. If Russia is a third wider than Africa, and this is half of the ball. Shut up, the earth is round. That is a two dimensional. <laughs> we got a little lag. I got one. He beat the bay. He beat the bay. <laughs> so, how do you have enough room for all of Russia and the Pacific and the Atlantic and Canada if this is half of the ball from the 72 image? Hey, dude, dude, if it's round, just say it's a ball. Say it's a spinning ball. So this is most likely the biggest deal concerning the Flat Earth debate, is why does NASA lie? They're lying and been caught. But why? Why would they lie about these pictures, or even the shape of the Earth at all? Isn't that strange that all these pictures are fake? And again, they lie to you. They apparently say we can't be past the Van Allen radiation belt right now in 2017, but we did it back then? With tech from the 60s? NASA claims that we successfully landed man on the moon six times between 1969 and 1972. 
Here we are in 2016 and NASA constantly tells us that we can't go beyond low Earth orbit. Low Earth orbit is between 99 miles and 1200 miles away. The moon is claimed to be 238,000 miles away. That's a big difference. One. NASA's next spacecraft, already being built and tested across America, will do those things and more. This is the spacecraft that's going to take humans to explore uh, the solar system. It's the next big step for NASA in exploration. Called the Orion Multipurpose Crew Vehicle, or MPCV, this next generation spacecraft will enable America to explore beyond low Earth orbit. Two. As we get further away from Earth, we'll pass through the Van Allen belts, an area of dangerous radiation. But Orion has protection. Shielding will be put to the test as the vehicle cuts through the waves of radiation. Sensors aboard will record radiation levels for scientists to study. We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space. Three. The plan that NASA has is to build a rocket called SLS, which is a heavy lift rocket. It's something that is, that is much bigger than what we have today. And it will be able to launch the Orion capsule with humans on board, as well as uh, landers or other uh, components to, via, to destinations beyond Earth orbit. Right now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go. And this new system that we're building is going to allow us to go beyond and hopefully take humans into the solar system to explore. So the moon, Mars, asteroids, there's a lot of destinations that we could go to, and we're building these building block components in order to allow us to do that eventually. Four. The kinds of technologies that we're testing out on space station are definitely helping us with our goals of going beyond low Earth orbit. So we have a really robust exploration program at NASA. Five. And unlike the previous program, we are setting a course with specific and achievable milestones. Early in the next decade, a set of crewed flights will test and prove the systems required for exploration beyond low Earth orbit. So how did we send humans to the moon six times so early on, but we can't figure it out in 2016? How was it so easy to go to the moon in 1969 using this flimsy lunar module? Even more interesting, who was already on the moon filming the arrival of the module? Was it the same person who stayed back on the moon and filmed the departure of the module? Four days. Mission arm is asking. Okay, I'm going to get the pro. 99, proceeded. 3, 2, 1, liftoff. Three, two, one. Mission. Right away, Houston. That's your good. Excellent. Just wondering. This is ODD TV. Thanks for watching. Hi, my name is Dalton Spurlock, and my question is for Kate. Why is it not possible to physically land on or explore other planets? Well, it is physically possible. We've sent humans to the moon. The United States has uh, proven that we can actually land uh, people and a large amount of equipment on another body. Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? Mm, oh my God. Stop fucking lying. The lunar module looks ridiculous. Held together with cardboard, duct tape, and staples? You really think they went to the moon in that? No, it's all a hoax. NASA has lied. 
They lie to you because of money and greed. It's awful. But the truth about Flat Earth is the truth about who you are in your divine nature. You are a divine creation of God. They hide the truth to steal your divinity and your power and hold it over you. Knowledge is the key and power, and they make you weak by covering the truth. The truth is in the numbers, and if enough of us wake up, we're going to change the game and we'll overcome this. And it doesn't come by force, but by truth and by our divine self through God. Our collective consciousness will overcome and our desire to do good and to be good on earth here is what's going to change. And change will come when enough of us switch our intent to bring heaven forth on earth. No more war, no more profit from torture and murder of defenseless animals, no more killing of our mother earth for selfish gain, no murder, rape or torture of innocent kids, our children. It all needs to stop, and this begins with you. Raise your frequency and tune in to God. Be on the good path. It's hard overcoming the indoctrination of the world's lies over an entire lifetime, and I have absolutely no problem with you or anyone, even myself included, believing that the earth is a sphere, but we must find proof of it to be so now. And the point in this video is to show you that the proof is not there when it comes to a photo. There is no photographic evidence of the Earth as a ball. Isn't it weird that Mr. Scientist Neil deGrasse Tyson claims that the Earth is more pear-shaped or an oblate spheroid? Yet all of NASA's photos or any photo of the Earth from space is a perfect sphere? Um, so, so you spin, you know, when you spin pizza dough, it kind of flattens out. It gets wider in the middle and so, Earth, throughout its life, even when it formed, it was spinning, and it got a little wider at the equator than it does at the poles. So it's not actually a sphere, it's an it's oblate, and officially it's an oblate spheroid, that's what we call it. But not only that, it's slightly wider below the equator than above the equator. A little chubbier. A little chubbier. Yeah. Chubby's a good way, it's like pear-shaped. So, pear-shaped, pear-shaped. What? Pear-shaped, pear-shaped. Okay! There's something wrong here, and I'm pointing this out. The truth has been hidden from you for so long that you have no idea what's true. But what is most true is that it's easy to connect the dots when you truly look and seek with an open mind. I hope that you find the truth, and it gives you power for the good and benefit of us all. Now I hope that you found this video helpful and that you liked it. And if you did, please share it, and let's get the truth known. I you and bless you with all my might. God is love. Let's change the world, together, one piece at a time. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video presentation. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, and share it on your favorite social media sites. There's a lot more to come, so stay tuned and we'll see you back next time.